Hey Derek, I just saw your video about Isaiah Miranda at 19. I had 14 nanogram per deciliter testosterone levels, but that is because of a pituitary tumor. Then I got three more tests. This is the most recent and my highest level, 48 nanograms per deciliter so far. Um, and I'll show you his, uh, I'll dig into his blood work after. So this is uh, the rest of his message. What's up guys, Derek, moreplacemoreleads.com. Today we are going to be doing a bit more of a deep dive into low test levels in young men who would otherwise seemingly be healthy individuals, but yet they show up with like literally not even low triple digits, not like 100, 200 nanogram per deciliter total T levels, but you know, 20, 30, 40 uh, nanograms per deciliter. And it's extremely abnormal to the point where um, this is what we touched on in the Isaiah Miranda video um, about how his abnormal levels were likely caused either by exogenous hormone or synthetic drug induced uh, HPTA suppression, or he has some sort of major medical condition that is otherwise screwing with his pituitary gland. So the reason I want to touch on this again is more so because uh, I want to dig more into the cases where you could actually experience this kind of a test level naturally without any synthetic drug intervention like what the actual what you would see medically when this actually occurs in a legitimate natural individual and interestingly enough i had a few um well, i actually had a handful of people reach out to me with different examples of either guys with pituitary tumors themselves or physicians that wanted to reach out and show me examples in their practice of um hyperprolactinemia and things of this nature that and kind of give me their stance on <laughs> everyone basically said the same thing that they don't think he's natural and they think he's on pretty much the same conclusion i came to but this is a good educational moment for who knows you know like some person out there might actually have this medical condition for all we know maybe isaiah has the same condition too and he just needs to get checked it's highly unlikely but this is the situation or you know probably the most common cause of the most uncommon <laughs> cause of this happening because if something this obscure is going to happen this is likely the mechanism by which it'll work so anyways i picked out uh, two good examples here so one um this is a good one i thought to bring to light hey derek i just saw your video about isaiah miranda at 19 i had 14 nanogram per deciliter testosterone levels but that is because of a pituitary tumor then i got three more tests this is the most recent and my highest level 48 nanograms per deciliter so far um, and I'll show you his, uh, I'll dig into his blood work after. So this is uh, the rest of his message. My doc also diagnosed me with Cushing's because of the cortisol. So he had high cortisol levels too. At the time of the blood work, I was five foot 10, 135 pounds. I ran a few miles per day, probably overtrained and undernourished. This was my runner physique. And this is a picture of him. So Isaiah is definitely lying. If you want a video, if you want to make a video about my experience, let me know. Thank you. Thanks for rating. And then you can see here he had an MRI in uh, May 2019 for uh, pituitary microadenoma as well as for his hypogonadal state just to see exactly like what is going on. So when we get into his blood work, we can kind of uh, get a more uh, clear image of what's going on, at least in the serum, of course. So some of his uh, metabolic parameters and then ACTH is high. Follicle stimulating hormone is low, very low. Um, as far as other gonadotropins, he has the LH is actually in range, but not good. It's like right on the cusp of deficient. And then prolactin, 21.3 nanogram, nanograms per milliliter. So obviously not ideal whatsoever. It indicates a underlying major issue. Cortisol AM, 24 micrograms per deciliter. So way too high, obviously. Um, and obviously has a compounding effect in terms of all of the um things that are going on with this guy so his t3 free two picograms per milliliter so that's like clinically hypothyroid as well so he has a in-range tsh and an in-range t4 all but not ideal and then a low t3 accompanying his crash test levels with a 48 nanogram per deciliter total t and a 5.2 picogram per milliliter free testosterone i it's so much, it feels so much better to say picogram, but I know that's wrong, but what I'll probably continue saying it like that in the future, to be honest. Um, going to SHBG, yeah, we already saw that 37. GNRH, less than two picograms per milliliter. Um, so everything is, you know, not where it should be, obviously. Uh, DHT, obviously you expect that to be low with his test levels being crashed as well. 
his estrogen levels also are going to be in the toilet. We don't even need to see them. We just know. So anyways, this is a case of an actual pituitary tumor and what can come as a result of it. So this is not a case of overtraining. This is not a case of deficient diet model. This is not a case of fucking anything. Well, like obviously, obviously those things would not help, but for him to have these levels in his blood work, there's an underlying condition and it's not about, it's not explained via, you know, some natural thing. Like this is a legitimate pituitary tumor that is contributing to this guy's state. And he either has to look, uh, what intervention he wants to do. If he wants to deal with it directly, if he wants to deal with it exogenously with TRT, like there's a, a handful of options he might have to look into, but at the end of the day, this isn't going to be fixed by increasing his fats or reducing his workout frequency or anything like that. So that's an actual case of only 19 years old, 14 nanogram per deciliter total T level. So while it's rare, it happens. And this was uh, not induced by, you know, SARM, steroids, whatever. This is like a legitimate medical like concern. So if uh, if you fall into this camp, so like get your shit checked, obviously. Another example, this is a uh, doctor I spoke to the other day, Derek, family doc here, wanted to add some anecdotal data. The only male patient without recent performance enhancing drug use I've had with Isaiah's test. So uh, the 20 total as well as the two free and low gonadotropin levels had hyperprolactinemia as a cause of his secondary hypogonadism. So approximately uh, 30 years old, male, chief complaint, severe fatigue, increasing body fat, erectile dysfunction without having an orgasm in months, um, and infertility for a year. No nipple discharge or sensitivity, no subjective gyno, very mild gyno on exam. Um, normal testicular volumes on ultrasound. Uh, Cabergoline monotherapy brought his lab values um, within normal levels and resolved other presenting complaints. Almost no chance Isaiah Miranda had hyperprolactinemia, but I'm shocked they didn't get a pro prolactin level or image his pituitary for an adenoma. So if you actually dig into hyper hyperprolactinemia, like this is probably the first thing you should check if you actually are legitimately natural and like unexplainably have less than 100 nanogram per deciliter total T levels. Like obviously getting a comprehensive blood work panel done to actually check what's going on. Where's the imbalance? Where's the deficiency? Is it just broad spectrum? Everything's fucked up. Like what is going on here? Um, but this is definitely worth one of the things that should be owned in on in a very obscure case of a teenager or a young man who should otherwise be healthy with, you know, like female level levels, not just like suppressed to, or just, you know, borderline hypogonadal, 200 to 300, whatever, like an actual, like literally functioning off of adrenal steroid production, essentially. Um, this is worth delving into. Hyperprolactinemia is the most common endocrine disorder of the hypothalamic pituitary axis. A prolactinoma is the most common cause of chronic hyperprolactinemia. Once pregnancy, primary hypothyroidism and drugs that elevate serum prolactin levels have been excluded. Patients can present with hypogonadism, infertility, um, galactorrhea, osteopenia, and mass effects of the tumor. When hyperprolactinemia is confirmed, a cause for the disorder needs to be sought. This involves a careful history and examination followed by lab tests and diagnostic imaging of the cella tersica. The goals of treatment are to normalize prolactin levels, restore gonadal function, and reduce the effects of chronic hyperprolactinemia. Dopamine agonists are the treatment of choice for the majority of patients. Um, transphenoidal surgery is usually reserved for patients who are intolerant of or resistant to dopamine agonists or when hyperprolactinemia is caused by non-prolactin secreting tumors compressing the pituitary stalk. Caber has been shown to be more effective and better tolerated than bromocryptine. I'm sure you guys have probably heard of these drugs before if you're in the uh, realm of PEDs, bodybuilding. These are drugs that are commonly added as adjuncts like not even proactively, like just unnecessarily sometimes along with 19 NORs. Um, and I think their use need, needs to be modulated a lot more uh, carefully because these are not, these are not like cookie cutter drugs. You know what I mean? Like some people think that when they throw in a 19 NOR into their stack, it's like, I, just like I thought I needed an AI with my test, I automatically need Kaber with my DECA, TREN, whatever, you know? So anyways, however, there are more data on the safety of the latter drug during pregnancy and, the, and uh, bromocryptine, therefore, uh, remains the treatment of choice in hyperprolactinemic women wishing to conceive. So this is a pretty good read if you want to dig into the mechanism as well as see, uh, 
you know, how it's commonly treated, um, cases where this can, uh, you know, rears its ugly head sometimes. But basically the main reason I want to bring it up is because this is the most common endocrine disorder of the HPTA or HPGA or whatever you want to call it. Like this is the one of the main things to look for if you are an individual who just unexplainably has a, you know, double digit T level in a, at an age where you should otherwise be functioning with 600 plus. So definitely something that should be looked for proactively um, on the uh, lab side by the doctor, whoever it is before just jumping to, you know, jumping the gun to TRT potentially, because there are some individuals where the, it's not just about like, oh, you know, genetically you just have you're supposed to have low T, like, no, there's probably an underlying reason why something's fucked up. Like either perhaps you're suppressed by something you just took recently and it's still working its way out of your system. Your gonadotropins haven't kicked back in. Or maybe there's some major medical, you know, concern and maybe we need to look further and get uh, some imaging done, see if there is something going on with your pituitary, get some more, you know, follow-up blood work to dig a bit further above and beyond your basic um, gonadotropin and total T. And estrogen, like maybe there's a chronic elevation of prolactin historically in your blood work, you know, let's uh, fucking dig into it and see what's going on. So these are the kind of things that have a bit more like nuance and they're not as simple as just, oh, you have low T, therefore you're supposed to, therefore you need TRT. Like this is the kind of stuff you want to, uh, like you probably don't fall into the boat of this situation. I just thought it was a good opportunity to bring it to light because this is being discussed recently in a pretty big video a couple videos now actually that I've done and then a few other people on YouTube have done too about naturals with just like fucking rock bottom test levels. Like this is a situation in which this would actually occur in a natural individual. And this is the kind of thing you would look for in order to realize like, okay, this is actually the reason why I've been feeling like shit this whole time. This is the reason I can't put on muscle. This is the reason I've had chronic ED for a fucking year. This is the reason why nothing is working the way it should. Like this is the kind of stuff you gotta be looking into. So anyways, it was cool to get, uh, you know, people reaching out to me with either personal experience with it or doctors who have experience in the field with it um, and be able to bring a more obscure topic to you guys that may be, uh, Otherwise would go overlooked probably because most people just see a low T and they're like, you need TRT. And it's like, you know, sometimes it's, uh, it depends, man. It depends. Like, is this uh, suppression induced by exogenous blank or is it uh, a medical thing? Maybe you need to dig further and see if there's something else that's going to be happening that could be problematic above and beyond your TRT. And it's not just about you just genetically have low levels and that's it. And like fucking see you later. No, like there's sometimes more needs to be done to look into it if you want to like really understand your situation. So anyway, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplates.com. Follow me on Instagram at moreplates underscore more dates. Facebook, Snapchat, Bitchu, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. My TRT clinic, notably my recommended lab test panels I designed myself. Um, Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode, pre-workout formulas I designed myself from scratch. And anything else I'm associated with, it's all in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.